Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today, I'm talking to James Wilson. He's the CEO of Alchemy Resources. The ASX code is ALY. Who are Alchemy? Well, you're just about to find out, but they've got uh, projects in New South Wales as well as WA. It's two of my favorite areas, gold and lithium, and here to tell us the story and dive a little bit deeper than I ever could. James, good to see you. Hi, Kerry, and uh, thanks for the kind introduction. Yes, um, uh, Alchemy, diverse set of uh, assets across Australia, uh, and uh, polymetallic, obviously, and lithium, uh, everybody's favourite commodity at the moment, but we also have a lot of other critical metal uh, assets up there with copper and uh, and gold as well, as well as also uh, high-purity aluminum and um, nickel. Oh. And yeah. There um, you go. I, I talked gold and lithium, and you're going, no, we've got copper, we've got aluminum, we've got everything. If, uh, the periodic table of the elements resources, yeah. it's No, it's a diverse portfolio, Um uh, predominantly lithium and gold in Western Australia, but uh, base metals in the eastern states with a, a bit of a gold spin on there. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting portfolio. There's, there's lots of uh, latent value in it. And, okay. Uh, and we are working those assets uh, as we, we go on in the, the next 12 months or so. should see some pretty exciting news flow, we think. All right. Well, let's start on the eastern states because you've got some in New South Wales. Uh, so let's talk about that, your your New South Wales assets before we head over to your side of the, your neck of the woods in WA. So let's talk New South Wales. What have you got? Sure. It's it's predominantly uh, three assets that we have over there, which is the Westland project, which is up near uh, near Ningen. And it's a uh, nickel cobalt, uh, lateritic nickel cobalt asset. Uh, we already have a resource on it. It's 21 million tonnes at uh, 0.8 nickel and 0.05 cobalt. And sitting on top of that is a 7 million tonne uh, high-purity alumina resource, which is what is used for um, uh, 4N HPA, high-purity alumina, uh, right. to sapphire glass and batteries and, and, and whatnot. So, you know, th that's a great asset. Uh, the other one we have is the Yellow Mountain Mine asset. Uh, that is a, a project that hasn't been drilled since 1986, and wow. we're working, working through the administrative um, uh, process there to go and get on the ground there as quickly as we can. And we think that we could probably do that in the next few months or so. Uh, it's a really amazing asset. There was It's an old copper mine that was there, copper, gold, lead and zinc, uh, with um, grades of grab samples of the mullet pile on the surface of up to 7.1% copper and 6.5% lead. So, you know, there's your, there's your prize for you right there is that there are some amazing results. Drill results are 24.4 metres at 1% copper, 1% lead, and 1% zinc from surface. So, you know, hasn't been drilled for 40 years. So we're really excited to try and get on the ground there uh, and try and work it out. And then uh, we've got our overflow asset, uh, which sits about 20 kilometres up the road from there. And again, it's a it's a gold, uh, lead, zinc mineralised system. It looks very similar to the Hera ore you see down the road. We haven't done a resource on that yet. But again, I mean, you've got six metres at 7.6 gold, uh, 10 metres at 4.4 gold with a with a zinc and a lead back end to it as well of uh, various percentage grades there. So it's exciting. It just needs someone to come in and actually have a bit more of a different view on it, uh, try and work it out structurally. And that's what alchemy is about. We're sort of about breaking it all down to brass tacks and then really going back in and uh, and reinterpreting these things in, a, in more of a modern way with modern technology. I just want to touch on the Yellowstone mine that you said hasn't been touched since 1986. Mm -hmm. um, exactly why it, has that happened? Where is it? And are there challenges? Is, it, is there a reason why no one's actually gone and had a look at this until you guys came along? Well, uh, yeah, it's, there was a number of, uh, of companies that uh, looked at it from the, the AL before the 80s as well, including Triaco and, uh, and a few of the other sort of, you know, 1980s explorers that were fairly well known at the time. Uh, it was owned by, I think, Golden Cross at the time as well. Mm. Um, and uh, there's been native title applications over here, and the, the majority of this ground at Yellow Mountain, which sits, you know, sort of 60 kilometres north of Condoblin in, in western oh, yeah. New South Wales, um, is sitting under Crown land. So you need ministerial approval to go and get on the ground there. So we've worked through probably about, you know, I'd say 99.99% of the uh, the approvals process to get in there, and we're, we're pretty confident that we're at the sort of final stages of getting those approvals and uh, looking to the minister to go and sign off so we can go and jump in there and uh, and go and have a crack. And once we do that, you know, the, the, the basically the, the first couple of drill holes I will be looking at drilling is the ones right next to the existing mine to go and replicate those 1980 results to see if those blokes were telling the truth for a start <laughs> to, uh, to see because, you know, we're using reverse circulation these days. You know, they were using different methods back in the 80s or before. 
and yeah. just try and validate those results. But I mean, we can see it. We've got photos on the ground of this stuff and there's just malachite and azurite sticking out of the ground, well, sticking out of the ground in the spoils piles from the old mines. So um, yeah, typical sort of old, old mining scenario. Uh, there was an old foundry there as well, I think, I believe. And so, you know, people have had a good crack at it, but they only, they only took the real sort of sweet cherries off the top, mm -hmm. the ultra high grade ore back then. So, you know, look, it's a very exciting project to have a look at. And I don't think it's certainly had the uh, the exploration uh warranted that uh, that really does need to give you going back in there and having a look yeah and, and that area condoblin I mean, it's a mining area that, that they all understand it there so i wouldn't have thought you're going to have too many issues getting stuck in around there are you no no i was sitting down with the farmer and his family having a cup of tea uh, a couple of days ago actually and um we we're already sort of working out the best time to go in there and fit in with um, with their cropping season nice they're great they, they they understand the process they understand how it all works um, Yellow Mountain itself is a, a, a sheep, you know, there's wild sheep running around there and wild goats. So there's no issue. The access is easy. It's just an administrative uh, uh, barrier that we're overcoming at the moment. And uh, yeah, as I said, I think we'll be, you know, a couple of months from now, I think we'll be, uh, we'll have that all across. What about West Lynn? Yeah, West Lynn sits uh, up near Ningen, as I said. Yep. Uh, we did a lot of work back in 2018 on that project. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a um, serpentinite hosted a nickel cobalt uh, or lateritic nickel cobalt asset, uh, 21 million tonnes at 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.84 nickel and 0 0.05 cobalt. And the uh, the weathering of that uh, material has produced a uh, an alumina resource that sits just horizontally above that as well. And we've got a 6.6 .6 million tonne at sort of circa 21% AL203. Uh, what does that resource. mean? What does that mean for, for us that are not... Geo. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so what you do is you you bung that into a, uh, a a tub and you send it off to the metallurgists and then they go and try and uh, uh, acid leach it or they do the various sort of metallurgical processes on that. And the outcome of that is that we can achieve a ninety nine point nine five percent high purity alumina product. So if you look down at your watch at the moment, you see sapphire glass in it. I do. We got uh, HPA in it, and they're starting okay. to use HPA for batteries. Uh, and also, it is a critical metal, and it's the, the probably the the, uh, the the more of the the lesser known critical metals. But there's been a lot of people making a lot of money out of it. It's a very high priced uh, commodity as well. So the next steps for that is to do a bit more metallurgy on it and try and get it to 99.99% uh, high purity alumina, which is what's called 4N uh, product. And then you can go to 99.99999, and it's you know it's 5N product. And these are just the purities of those uh, HPAs and they're very much in demand because uh, there's not much of it around that's got that kind of um, uh, purity about it and, and okay. ease of processing. So this would be mined concurrently with the uh, the nickel cobalt resource once that gets off the ground. And and to be sort of straight up and down, you know, you need more sc a scale for these things to have a nickel cobalt resource. You're sort of talking like 50 or 60 million tonnes is where you want to be. So it's a very easy, it's a big mag anomaly we've got. It sits over about 20 kilometres long. We've only drilled out the sections of it that we uh, we're doing at the time, which was warranted to get to the resource, but there's certainly more exploration upside there as well. And it's more just a function of more drilling more holes and uh, and getting more tons into that uh, that model that would work. So when when are you going to start drilling that again soon? Um, yeah, again, it's it's all part of the 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 uh, the administrative applications that we're doing at the moment. That includes right. Yellow Mountain Overflow and Westland together. So we're confident in the next few months we'll have that all tied up. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting part of the world, and and it's you know it all sits under cover as well. So uh, you know a lot of these things are sitting underneath farms and whatnot. So it's not like Western Australia where they're sticking out of the ground, or you uh, it's it's a little bit more difficult. So, Don't you have one other project in New South Wales? Uh, yes, the Overflow uh, project, and there's also one called Euro, which sits out near Boda. And um, that's just, uh, oh, sorry, there's one called Melrose, but it's Yellow Mountain and Melrose are part of the same thing. Yeah, um, okay. Just, just talking about Melrose just very quickly, it just it's a couple of kilometres south of uh, Yellow Mountain. And we had Scott Halley have a look at some historical data. We did uh, some resampling of uh, the old chips that were there from the, the 80s, and they were calling it a copper gold porphyry, and everybody was fist pumping that they all knew about it. And we put it to Scott, who's probably the most uh, preeminent geochemist in the world, and uh, his view was that it was almost, but not quite completely, not a copper gold porphyry. <laughs> oh. So this shows you what modern assaying methods will do with four acid digest. And um, and modern assaying is that you can get a chemical footprint and you can say, you know what, that's not what they thought 50 years ago. And we changed the model almost overnight. Okay. So we think it's an intrusive related gold system. 
And then you start looking at the data and you go, well, it all starts fitting now, you know, whereas it was all scatty uh, gold data before you turn it around and you go, wow, that actually might work, you know? And so this is all part of the, the planning that we're doing with the farmers to go and get on the ground once they're finished cropping and uh, draw a few of these targets later this year. So, so that'll be later this year. And then yep. you got a joint venture? Uh, yes, it's the joint venture. Was uh, was uh, uh, It's currently with Develop Global. Uh, we're the operator and we're an 80% uh, joint venture partner there. They're 20%. And uh, yeah, they're good guys to work with. We talk to them all the time. And, you know, they've got great a great skill set to add there as well. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be hitting the ground running as, as soon as we can. Okay, I'm about to, to shift focus from New South Wales across to WA, but before I do, do you have a separate team that's going to be looking at New South Wales, or um, are you more like one of the te- one of the guys I was tweeting recently said we have the cricket season, the football season doesn't quite apply to New South Wales and and WA, but how do you manage? two different areas. That's right. We are a reasonably small team at the moment. We have used consultants in New South Wales from the uh, the good guys at Rangit in uh, in Orange, and we'll be using those guys again. They're, we're, we're pretty much in tune with them, and we've used those for the, like, probably the last five or six years. So uh, as you said, you know, there's a certain amount of bandwidth that you have with the small explorer, and uh, our footy season is, is all year long, and most of it's in Western Australia. So we've been trying to sort of figure out the best way for manpower to go on, but we're getting busier and busier in Western Australia. So we're now at the stage where we'll we'll sort of technically be splitting the teams in two and, right. uh, and getting guys to uh, to do some work for us over in New South Wales. So, okay. So that... Yeah, horrific, horrific fights cost at Qantas as well. Thanks, Alan Joyce. So, uh, no, he's not there for much longer, James. It's okay. <laughs> There's a new chick in town coming at the end of the year, so it'll all be good, yeah. I hope. All right. Uh, without further ado, I want to come across to WA if we could, um, and then we'll bring it all together because you've got a very large land position close to, I believe, Global Lithium and Romelia. So explain to us how you got it, what have you got your hands on, and what are you looking to do? Yeah, so historically where we are is, well, the projects are about 110 kilometres east of Kalgoorlie. And uh, it's called the Coroni and the Lake Rebecca assets. Now, Coroni sits, if anybody knows all the Silver Lake operations, they've got their what used to be called Daisy Milano, then Mount Belchus, and then their third operation is called Aldus. Now, Aldus sits right in the guts of all our tenements, and uh, it's excised from our tenements. Uh, and we surround them on, on all sides for about 60 kilometres to the south and about 20 or 30 kilometres to the north. And historically, that was gold tenure. If you talk to Chris Cairns, it was owned by Integra before that, uh, oh, yeah. before they got out by Silver Lake. And it's great country. It's, it's you know, it's high grade gold terrain. It's very short strike lengths, but very high grade structures if you can lock onto them. And uh, it had been that way for, you know, 50 or 60 years. We put our database together when I joined and obviously with the, you know. When was that, James? Sorry. Uh, 2020, I joined. Right. And, um, and we started having a look at our database and mining it for other uh, elements. And we started looking at the lithium and rock chip data and soil sampling data that was done from 2018 had this in, and we pulled it up and had the whole screen lit up in terms of lithium anomalies. And we just went, what's this? <laughs> it's yeah. like, and so what's lithium? Like everybody else would probably be saying as well. It's like, and, and how do we explore for it? So, you know, arguably we've been on a very, very steep learning curve. We've used some really, really great consultants and we've learned from them as well. Uh, our current guys that we use are uh, the Atlas Geophysics guys with um, Leon Matthews and New Gen Geo with Regis Neroni. And these are some of the smartest guys I've ever met in terms of lithium exploration from a geophysical perspective. So we started having a bit of a, poked a few holes into this thing last year, did some soils all over the place, got uh, anomalism everywhere. We've got the red oak and alder stuff that's 60 k's away that's got 15 kilometers long by five kilometers wide of what you would call anomalous lithium tenure. Get closer to home. We walked down the road on one of the, uh, the anomalies and we walked straight over the top of pegmatites that had never been mapped. And so we've spent probably the last 12 months going super hard on the mapping there around what's called the Cherry, Hickory, Mesquite and Pecan uh, prospects. And they sit about eight kilometres down the road from Manor uh, on the other side of what we are calling the, it's the Cardunia uh, granite. Now, in terms of lithium 101, uh, what you need is you need a granite that has uh, it is a fertile granite, so it's got all the goodies in it to begin with, and it's it's the parent granite for the anomalism and then eventually the the, the, the lithium uh, mineralization in the region. And we're right next to that on the other side of global lithium. 
So um, we've since mapped, you know, sort of up to seven kilometres of prospective tenure. We've got soil results through the wazoo. And then just the other day when we were um, ground truthing some of our gravity anomalies, we actually came across uh, outcropping spodumene and lipidolite. Now we found oh. uh, spodumene in our last drill program, only over about two metres in one of the drill holes, uh, but we still proved that it was a fertile pegmatite. And so, you know, two and a half kilometres north of that, we walk out there tripping over purple micas of uh, lipidolite and, and spodumene the other day. The rock chip assays came back at about, no, it was about two and a half thousand ppm lithium, so 0.27. So it's not sort of turning the dial for most people's radars versus our friends up in the Pilbara who uh, do exploration and they've got spodumene going, you know, two, three percent. What investors need to understand around our part of the world is it's exceptionally weathered. And so uh, lithium is a very light element and it mobilizes, uh, it erodes very easily and very quickly. And uh, so you get very few signatures at surface of that lithium. What you do is you drill down 10 metres and you should hit the goodies. And that's what we intend to find out. We've got um, uh, soil pathfinder elements in the region. Then this is over this area. You've got rubidium values up to over 6,000 ppm versus background of 50. Uh, cesium, which is the other one in the LCT, uh, mm -hmm. 220 ppm versus background of three, so 70 times background. Uh, tantalum 122 actually tantalum is even higher at the moment for some of the recent stuff up to 160 ppm versus background of 0.15 so over a thousand times background in these areas so whatever it is it's on fire it's 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 okay. not a smoldering um smoldering smoking gun here this is like there is something very serious happening in part of the world in our part of the world we've got the right pegmatites we've got the right amphibolite facies rocks we've got the right chemistry we've got to write everything we've just got to go and drill it and that's sort of our, uh, our our main sort of key. Um, as you mentioned, uh, the people around us, obviously Global Lithium up the road, they've got a, a, a small parcel of land just next door to us. Um, and now Remelius is coming on the scene with their takeover of Breaker. Yeah. Um, after that takeover, uh, Alchemy will be the largest landholder in the belt, which is about 1,700 square kilometres. And I think then Remelius will be a close second and uh, obviously then uh, GL1 after that. So. It's a very, very strategic piece of uh, piece of ground. Uh, we intend to hold on to it as long as we can. <laughs> so, um, but that, no that does help, James. But I, look, I, I'm trying to get my head around it, James, because I talk to a lot of people, um, and quite frankly, lithium is the story that everyone talks about at the moment. Yep. And there's a lot out there. I want to find out, and obviously, James, you know, you're going to say we've got the best, et cetera, et cetera. But I kind of want to go, all right, what makes yours stand out from all the others out there? You know, you you, you spoke about global lithium being up the road, fine, all good. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot. What what do you think is the secret sauce for, for what you have? I think you need to demonstrate scale. And this is kind of where Alchemy's work backwards a little bit in this regard is that uh, we've, we haven't found all the outcropping spodumene that all our, our colleagues and you know peer group have up in the Pilbara uh, yep. with these great purple crystals, as I said, spodumene and lipidolite. And then, you know, you might drill it, it might only be a metre wide. Um, what we've found is with the drill program we did last year is that we're intersecting pegmatite zones up to 27 metres down hole. And we were approximating that was almost true thickness. And we were doing that a few times as they uh, as they hit this correct geological um, uh, package, which is called a high pyroxene dolerite. So we've we've established that the zones can up to be you know be up to sort of 27, 30 meters down hole, which is great. We've got width. Um, what we failed to do was find 27 meters worth at two percent lithium. So okay. we know that when these pegmatites go into this particular rock type, they blow out, which is great, and and we're happy with that. We know that they continue to the north. And we know now that two and a half kilometers north, we've actually hit spodumene and lipidolite at surface, which we never saw before. So we've got the ingredients now saying that the right lithium mineralogy is at surface. We can demonstrate these things are fat. And um, you put the two and two together, hopefully, and you have a win. Because you're not you're never going to be able to mine a one meter wide pegmatite with it doesn't matter if you've got 10% lithium in it or not. It's, it's yeah. still only a meter wide. Your strip ratio is going to be through the wazoo. And so we're applying economic criteria to this before we've even, you know, drilled a hole. If it's only a metre wide, then there's no point in drilling extra holes next to it because you're not going to find that big fat zone. We'll right. save those metres up for the stuff we want to do. So we're just in the process of drill planning at the moment uh, on that. And uh, with a bit of luck, we should be going on that in a few weeks. So, yeah, it's what makes point of difference for us is we've got a 32 million tonne lithium deposit just up the road going through feasibility. We've got similar sets of conditions where we are 
except it's undercover. Uh, it's covered by a little couple of meter wire, a couple of meters deep uh, sand channel, uh, which has effectively buried the thing. So there's no signature to it, uh, but we know it's there. So um, and there's no reason why we couldn't have a similar sized deposit on our ground. Uh, our soil sampling is 400 meters apart. The the GL1 uh, mana deposit is in total probably the initial discovery was only 300 meters long. So right. you, know, you can fit multiples of these things in between soil sampling and uh, gravity will only show you too so much. So yeah, we're very excited about it. All the conditions are correct. It's just the more you drill, as Edesh has told me when I was a, a, a first day as a geologist uh, out with uh, Great Central, is that the more you drill, the more you find. Uh, and, I've heard you say uh, that before, the more you drill, yeah. the more you find, yeah. And, and it's true. So, you know, we're not going to uh, be wilting violence in this regard and we will find out whether it's a boy or a girl pretty quick. Okay, you're going to go hard. How much cash have you got? Are you, is, is this going to be funded? What's I, I guess what I want to know is, for those listening at the moment, is there going to be a lot of news flow? How are you going to get get? Uh, yeah, so with um, news flow wise, obviously the uh, the drill program is being uh, planned at the moment, and looking to our board to go and approve that as soon as we can. Once we do that, we're probably a couple of weeks away at uh, at latest to go and get on the ground there. We our camp is right out there, and we can start up in twenty four hours. Um, cash at the moment, as the last quarter was five point six. Okay, uh, we were very lucky to raise uh, in November last year, which was probably the peak of the market. I and, agree. Yeah. And we did that in uh, 30 minutes. So um, uh, that was probably one of the fastest capital. Must, raises must have been your good looks and charm, uh, James. I think it, I, think it, I, I did have a, a uh, wash that day and put some, uh, some, uh, some deodorant on. But no, no, it was incredibly good support uh, from the investors. And it just shows you the potential and the, the quality of what we had at the time and still have. And it's probably it's improved since then. The, the issue that we have is we've got too much stuff. Uh, yeah. We've got 15 other targets to test. Okay. Um, so you could arguably spend, you know, five, $10 million a year on this sort of stuff. And uh, if I had that money, I would. So we're looking at ways to try and monetize that and uh, and to try and figure out a way that we can do that as a little explorer spending, you know, sort of uh, big boy budgets. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you think at some point you're going to get one of the big boys to come in and help you along with this? Oh, it's it's certainly one no, of those early days. About. Yeah, it's it. You know, when you're you're a little company, and by case in point, if we do a five thousand meter drill program on this this uh, these drill targets here, which is a sizable drill program for RC, that's circa half a million dollars. Yeah. So you know, you, you've only got a few goes at that before you have to come back to the market again. If you do three or four drill programs, you're you're down over two million, and you're hoping to have a success in that that time as well. So. You know, it's it's to try and offset that risk. Maybe you consider maybe a JV or or maybe another capital raise, uh, bring a partner in that sort of thing. And they're very commonplace at the moment. I think there's a lot in the news of of all the uh, all the uh, sort of the end users coming in to try and go and get a, a seat at the table with uh, with the explorers. Most of the guys who have a resource. So I think we'll be um, uh, it'll be a sliding door moment for us on this drill program, especially now that we've found lapidolite and spodumene at surface. That if we do have uh, any kind of discovery, no matter how big or small, uh, I think that will change the funding game uh, completely overnight. All right. So w with this discovery, that's kind of the news flow. I know that these things take a little while, but mm. uh, you said earlier in this conversation that you're going to go hard and aggressively. Mm. <clears throat> so you, you, you're you looking to do that sometime this year. If it's there, you're going to find it this year? Uh, I, I imagine if we draw, we're drawing these, uh, well, um, uh, waiting for our approvals, of course. But once that's that's done, then we'll be drilling, you know, five of these primary gravity targets. And uh, you'll know the good thing with lithium is you can see it, is that you can yeah. see the spodumene lipidolite. You can see because it's purple, but spodumene glows, and it glows a very particular sort of orangey color in the uh, the UV. So you know when you got it, it's just finding out how much you've got of it. So um, if if we have any kind of discovery, I'd imagine the rig would just never leave; it'll just stay. So, and and we've already got that sort of relationship with the drillers that they're just down the road in Kalgoorlie. The, the, the Raglan guys are a great group to deal with, and um, yeah, it's it, it's one of those things. You know, it's it, if we're finding it at surface, it's got to be deeper. Um, yeah. It's um, it sounds to me that like this is the this is the project that excites you though, because we talked about New South Wales. You have got a lot of projects over there as well, hmm. and I sometimes say. You know, it it can be confusing, but is this your your oh, dare I say it your favourite child at the moment? It, it's very exciting. I mean, the, the really nice thing. So gold. I'm a gold geologist by background. I'm also a lithium geologist now. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's um is that gold? You you drill, you get you know a high grade in it, and you can drill next to it, and you can get nothing. Is you know lithium is is like crustal scale stuff. It's big big structures, big everything. 
So, you know, when you get in the right zone for it, you know, you're, you're in, you know, you're in the zone, you know, they're just going to finding that zone in the first place is the, the hard part. And we're in the middle of that. Okay. Uh, smoke everywhere around us. Uh, so much pathfinder smoke. It's not funny. Um, there has to be some, well, maybe the whole Cardunia granite's like that. We don't know, but uh, we're not going to sort of sit there and, and just do more geochem and do more of this. We're going to drill it and we're going to find out. So, okay. Well, uh, we are running out of time, James. Uh, I don't think the market's recognised uh, necessarily, but you haven't you haven't been chatting about it. You've been doing the work, which is great. And I really appreciate you coming on Small Caps and letting our audience know what's going on. But let's wrap it up. I'll get you to come back again uh, soon after you've done some drilling because I'm actually quite excited about what that's going to show. Give me three reasons why people should be sitting up and taking notice of Alchemy Resources right now. Why do they look at you? Well, we uh, we have a pretty undemanding market cap. I think our market cap as of today would be uh, sort of about 17 or 18, and we've got close to six in the bank. So you're buying a company that's got strategic tenure in the Gilmore Sutra and, and lithium assets in probably the, one of the best new addresses in the uh, the whole lithium game uh, next to our GL1 friends up the road um, with an EV of sort of close to 12 million bucks. It's, it's cheap. You know, you can uh, um, it, it doesn't take much to move the dial there on any kind of discovery uh, the second one would be, you know, we're we're not uh, we're not spruikers per se. Uh, we're workers. Uh, we're all on the boots on the ground when we get into a program. So we're, you know, your, your dollars are working for you as well. Is that we have very low overheads and pretty much all the dollars go into the ground as much as they can. Oh, and uh, and the third one is, you know, we've got lots of sort of latent value. I mean, New South Wales, we could go and get on the ground there tomorrow. And uh, if we're, you know, once the applications are all through. And we could be drilling stuff that's that's you know sort of two decimal places or you know two two figures in terms of percentage copper uh, from these old copper mines by you know sort of the the next quarter. So it's very exciting. Um, there's lots of stuff to do. We haven't even spoken about the JVs we've got with the Sandfire guys up north. We don't even operate those. They're all autonomous. But you know they've spent twenty million dollars on the Sandfire JV over the years. So and we've got twenty percent of that. So all free carried. Uh, and lots of stuff to uh, to have any discovery on at the, at the same time. So our dollars, investment dollars are working for you uh, without us having to, having to do much on those. So it, it's great. There's there's lots of stuff to play with, lots of decent mature assets to play with. And uh, and it's the right stage of the market cyclically uh, to see the value in those, all the critical metals and, of course, precious at the same time. So And you yeah. know me, I love a little bit of precious metals thrown in there, uh, James. James, we've run out of time. It's been fantastic to chat to you. I am sure we will chat again, but good luck with putting that uh, drill bit in the ground and uh, we look forward to the news flow going forward. Thanks for Thanks, joining Karen. us, Small Caps.